If you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you're going to spend eternity lost in hell, in the lake of fire forever. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. Time to pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for your great love. We thank you for your help, Lord, in leading and guiding us into all truth. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this time as we minister your word, Lord. We pray that your people will be drawn closer to you, Lord, than they've ever been before. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time, <clears throat> time to worship the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Time to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oftentimes the day seems slow. Trials hard to bear. Praise the Lord. Murmur and despair, but Christ will soon appear. Catch his bride away, all tears forever over in God's eternal day.
What a great God. What a great God we serve. I hope you never tire. I hope that you never tire of us saying that. We serve a great God. Are you listening? We serve a mighty God. And I think oftentimes we see God so small. Amen? I don't think we see the Lord as he really is. Can you say amen? I think we see him so small. I think it's time for God's people to see the Lord as he is, not as he was when he came onto this earth as a lowly Nazarene. Are you listening? Jesus is no longer that lowly Nazarene, folks. I may know that. He's waiting for the appointed time when he will return to this earth in judgment. And how many know that he sent another comforter? Amen. And the Holy Spirit is not Jesus. And Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. When Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit. He refers to the Holy Spirit as him, he, because he's the third person of the Godhead. Are you listening? And I know oftentimes we refer the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Godhead, but he is God just as much as the Father and the Son. These three are one. Amen? Praise the Lord. And you're going to learn in this lesson that the Holy Spirit is right now on this earth. Amen? Just as Jesus Christ had a ministry on this earth, so the Holy Spirit has a ministry right now on this earth. Amen? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, has been on this earth for over 2,000 years, and most only refer to the Holy Spirit as a feeling, something that comes on the service that influences the service. Dear God, the Holy Ghost is God, people. Amen. John chapter 16 and verse 12. That's why I say many of you are not going to be able to follow much longer. Amen. There's another spirit in the land, and it's not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. I may know that. It's another spirit, folks. Jesus says, I have, I have yet many things to share or to say unto you. Many things. But you cannot bear them now. Are you listening? That's what he said back then to his disciples. You can't bear them now. Amen. There's things, folks, that we cannot bear. Things that we need to understand, that we've yet to understand, about the Holy Spirit even. 
how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He, notice the he, he will guide you into all truth. He. Jesus is not referring to himself. Jesus is speaking. Right? This is the Son of God speaking. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now notice this. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Dear God, folks, I don't know if we're going to get past this verse. Do you notice that Jesus Christ had the same ministry? Amen. He did not speak his own words. Jesus spoke only what he heard the Father saying. And what is Jesus saying about the Holy Spirit? He's not going to speak his own words. He shall not speak of himself. So when you hear those like Benny Hinn, this idea of good morning Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does not draw attention to himself. I may know that. The Holy Spirit draws attention only to Jesus, only to Christ. I may know that. He, the Holy Spirit is coming to this earth. The Bible says, just as Jesus Christ on this earth was an advocate, the word comforter in the Greek means advocate. So the Holy Spirit is on this earth as an advocate for you and I. What does that mean? He's our counselor. He's giving us counsel. But is it is it he, the Holy Spirit, that's giving us counsel? Well, he, Jesus just said he's not speaking his own words. So who's really counseling? Him? Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? The Father and the Son are speaking through the Holy Spirit in the earth, giving hit their wisdom, right? Giving God's wisdom. We've got to understand these things, folks, because there's a deception in this hour, and there's another spirit another gospel, another Jesus. There's a false. Are you listening? There's a false in the land. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. And we've got to understand these things. Dear God, praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise the Lord, folks. We've got to understand these things, folks. There's no, no reason to go any further in this chapter if we don't get established and understand these things. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit, folks. Jesus Christ is not on this earth anymore. I mean, know that. He's seated with the Father at his right hand. The Holy Spirit is here the spirit of truth. And 
he will not speak of himself. So important. So important to understand. Let's read this again till it gets in our hearts. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Now, what does Jesus mean he'll show you things to come? Look at the verse just before that. I have I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Now look at what Jesus is saying. When he, when he comes, he will show you things to come. Are you listening? So don't believe this lie today that God's not speaking today that God is not saying something to us today that's not even in the Bible. The Holy Spirit today is speaking expressly. How many know that? He will show you things to come. Does that have to be written in the Bible? He will show you things to come. Don't believe this lie today that the ministry, the apostles and the uh, prophets and the preachers, the evangelists, teachers, the pastors, all of that's gone away. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. There is still a ministry on the earth as it was even in the book of Acts. Oh, yeah. There are real apostles. There are real prophets. Amen? God has given gifts to the body of Christ. There are evangelists, and there are pastors and teachers. And I want you to understand something. The pastor's the teacher. So when you hear all these false teachers today, Jesus said false teachers would arise. A teacher is always a pastor. The Lord does not entrust teaching only to the pastor because the pastor has a flock. Some of you refer Brother Joseph as your pastor. Are you listening? If the Lord has given to us that position, that responsibility, then it's a gift to the body of Christ. But I have no business teaching God's people the word of God if I'm not a pastor. Now, I'm not a traditional pastor where I have a local church, but the Lord is using us to Shepherd, whosoever will. Amen. There's so many right now that are scattered, like scattered sheep with no shepherd. But obviously some of you recognize his voice, right? You, You recognize the good shepherd. Amen. So God has given us some in this hour. He's given us some, not many, some. In fact, most of the ministry today is not from God at all. You may know that. But a real pastor will be apt to teach. Be patient, gentle, 
and apt to teach. How many know that? It's greater condemnation upon those that teach if they teach in error. And there's a lot of false teachers in the South. Are you listening? So important for us to be instructed and for us to be guided into all truth. There's so many ministers in this hour that are teaching error. Are you listening? I wasn't planning on dealing with this topic of teachers, but it seems that's what the Holy Spirit wants to deal with. That's what God wants to deal with. Are there false teachers in the land? Remember what Paul said? You have no need that any man teach you. Because he said the anointing will teach you. Now, does that mean you don't need to submit yourself to a man of God and that you No, what that means is you're not listening to man. Right? Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. So Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Right? So if Brother Joseph is not ministering by the anointing of God, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be listening to me. Are you listening, people? It's the anointing that is teaching all of us. We're all being taught. We're all being instructed. We're all being guided by the Holy Spirit. And Brother Joseph is a vessel that God is using. But like Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. In other words, if I stop following Christ, stop following me. Amen. Now, I've been saying to you, many of you are not going to be able to follow much longer. You're not going to follow on because you won't be able to follow the truth. You'll reject it. You will reject it. Many of you are going to fall away. Many of you. And only those that love the truth are going to stick with it. Only those that love the truth, really love the truth, are going to be able to endure sound doctrine. Amen. I believe that the Lord is bearing down a bit because of the time. There's going to be a little added pressure. Not a lot. Not to add a burden to you, but pressure so that you understand the seriousness of this hour we're in. You've got to understand, people, where we are. We are in a serious hour. Very critical that we pay attention to the spirit of truth. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're not supposed to be exalting the Holy Spirit. We're not even supposed to be praying to the Holy Spirit. How many know that? We are taught by Jesus to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. You're not even supposed to be praying to Jesus. How many know that? Now, that doesn't mean you can't until you know how to pray to the Father, until you have that faith. But Jesus said, pray to the Father. Ask the Father in my name. How many of God's people in this hour don't even know there is a Father, that there is a heavenly Father? When I hear people praying, and when they're praying, they they only mention Jesus. I learned early on from my pastor, my spiritual father, to pray to the Father. Are you listening? When he would begin his prayer, he would say, 
he would say, Our Father. That got my attention. Amen? Dear God, people. We'll never grow up as long as we don't understand that there's our Heavenly Father. Search the Scriptures. You'll find, in the New Testament, you will find many times Jesus Christ referencing the Father. And he made it very clear that his job, his responsibility was to bring us to the Father. I may know that. In fact, Jesus said, my Father's greater than I. Now, what did he mean? He wasn't speaking in terms of the Godhead. He's just as much God as the Father is God. He was trying to help them to understand, just like when he was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's God too. So what was he saying? How many understand that Jesus Christ, or the Son of God, became fully man? Our finite minds can't grasp this. We really can't grasp it. But Jesus Christ, fully man and fully God, And so there are times where we see the man, Jesus Christ, praying and talking to the Father and talking to God. But then we see there's times where the Son of God is praying in the garden, where we see, or different places where we see the Son of God speaking to the Father. You got to draw that distinction, people. You got to see him not just as the Son of God, but you got to see him as a man as well, the Son of Man. Anybody listening? How many know Jesus Christ is not the Son of Man on this earth anymore? I, I want you to see him as he is, people, so you can get ready, so you can prepare yourselves. Jesus is coming in power, in great glory. Have you read the book of Revelation? Have you not read, brothers and sisters, how the Lord is returning in vengeance and judgment? Dear God, if you desire to know Jesus after the flesh, You came to the wrong place. We are not here to represent Jesus Christ as some groupie or some buddy. Anybody listening to this preacher? I'm trying to help you understand something. This generation today are trying to bring Jesus, they're trying to bring God down on their own level. They're trying to recreate God. They're trying to create him in their own image. Amen. And if Brother Joseph is going to lead you into his glory, remember what happened with Moses at the mount? The people said to Moses, we don't want want to hear his voice anymore. You speak to him, Moses. He's angry. He's He's not happy with us. It wasn't that God wasn't happy with him. It's that God wanted them to understand that he's holy. Are you listening? He wanted them to understand, I'm not like you. My standards are not your standards. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I mean, no, God is a spirit. Yeah. He's not flesh and blood. He's not a man. Jesus Christ, the man, that's the Son of God. The Son of God became the Son of Man for the purpose of saving our souls. But he's no longer on the earth, and we need to get our our vision higher. 
We need to see him high and lifted up like Isaiah. High and lifted up in his train, filling the temple. And the angels crying, holy, night and day. They don't never cease. Crying, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. The one in the Old Testament that said, I am that I am, is the same one in the New Testament that said, I am the good shepherd. Mm. I am the door. I am the bread of life. Anybody listening? I am the way, the truth, the life. No man goes unto the Father but by me. I hope you're listening, folks. We've got to get a proper understanding of who he is. And we'll never do that without the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's revealing to us in this hour who he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I told you we probably never get past this verse. <laughs> it's, it's just so deep. It's hard to get past this. Amen. Dear God. People, we've got to grasp this. We've got to understand. got to follow on to know him. Amen? All the way to the third day. All the way to the resurrection. That's what Paul was crying out. Oh, that I might know him. Right? The power of his resurrection. Being made conformable unto his death. Even the death of the cross. Amen. Praise the living God. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I think <laughs> I think we better quit right there. That's a lot. That's a lot to chew. Amen. That's a lot to chew. I trust that you will be chewing and meditating. That's what the word meditate means. It means to chew. And I trust you will be chewing on this, meditating on this, until the next message. God bless you. Not be defeated.